Well, well, BYD has a weapon that Tesla doesn't have. Uh, BYD is selling extended range hybrids. Tesla can't even counter that move. BYD outsells Tesla two to one in the pure battery electric business here in China. Uh, and BYD has them beat on price, which is why you've got to concede the pricing margin that you might enjoy everywhere else where you don't have the same competition. I'll assume you're a Tesla shareholder. And if I'm right, then you probably want Tesla to outsell every other auto manufacturer and make the most money doing it. You know what? I'm right there with you. I want to see our favorite company stomp the ever living crap out of the domestic OEMs and foreign owned car makers as well. It's a highly competitive market though, with countless variables and nuance that can't be easily accounted for when trying to determine a clear winner in the electric vehicle dominance. Also, maybe we're much too early in the story of the EV transition. Calling mission accomplished now may prove quite foolish in retrospect. Regardless, the debate and the conversations will happen about who the leaders are in the electric vehicle world. The answer for now just might be Tesla and its China-based rival, BYD. But from my point of view, I think the debate is centered around the wrong questions. It shouldn't be who will be selling the most EVs or who has the best EVs. It should be which company can take these cars to the next York, level. York. He, he's curious why Mr. Munger prefers an investment in BYD to Tesla. Well, that's easy. Tesla last year re reduced its prices in China twice. BYD increased its prices. We're direct competitors. We're so much ahead of BYD. I mean, BYD is so much ahead of Tesla in China. It's like a, it's just, it's almost ridiculous. As a Tesla fan, you've heard detractors say, Tesla is just a car company. It should be trading at a fourth of its price to earnings ratio. They'll probably add that the OEMs will catch up and that Tesla's margins will only shrink from here on out. I posit that you don't resist the argument because in the long term, as a shareholder, do you want Tesla just to be known as an auto manufacturer? Or in five to 10 years, do you want Tesla to be an artificial intelligence company or maybe a software company or an internet car company? I think we all know the answer. We of course want it to be known for its bleeding edge technology. The more and more you think of a car like an iPhone, the more you'll understand the trajectory Tesla needs to find itself on. One where the physical structure of the car is just a medium for the information, transactions, communications, and entertainment. The car should be like your cell phone, and the software inside it should be like an app store. Adam Jonas from Morgan Stanley sees the same future, coming out with a note today about what are cars really. Here's an excerpt. Tesla's vehicles have been long described as an iPhone on wheels. From our studying of the software-defined vehicle, it becomes clear that many of the key attributes of today's connected vehicles include all the primary hardware of a smartphone, battery, screens, compute, camera, audio in and out, modem, antenna, an array of sensors, gyros, etc but wrap inside an aerodynamic form factor with additional features such as electric motors, climate control, crash safety systems, seats, wheels, those sorts of things. He continues saying, our overweight thesis for Tesla is heavily dependent on an expansion of the addressable market beyond the point of sale. Adam's take stresses the idea that the car is no longer a car. I mean, it can't just be a car, but that company stock shouldn't trade like a tech company if all they want to do is push metal. If our main competitor is BYD, how ready are they for a revolution in AI, or at least just being a software company instead of a hardware one? Are they investing billions into compute via advanced AI chips, servers, data centers, and then matching peripherals in the cars like, like cameras and onboard inference computers? We obviously know Tesla has made these pricey investments. Consider that every Tesla car can activate FSD and participate in the beta, but most don't and Tesla has thousands of dollars of costs tied up in each car that doesn't take advantage of autopilot or self-driving capabilities. That in itself is an expression of Elon and Tesla's confidence in the future I talk about. It's a gamble they made that has been playing out for years since the cars first developed. And if Elon is right, they're the closest in the industry to cashing in. Then we have BYD. If I had to choose one word to describe their journey to self-driving, AI and autonomy, I'd choose the word confused. It seems that way from the outside looking in. Their actions are like whipsaws back and forth. One day they won't pursue it and the next day it's a multi-billion dollar investment. What am I talking about, you might ask? We'll go back in time just a few years and put together a list of all the BYD partnerships, agreements, and other deals where they intended to team up on some piece of an autonomous driving system. Starting in 2018, BYD's chairman, Wang Chuan Fu, says they and Baidu will work together to deliver a self-driving car by 2021, with a car company likely desiring to piggyback on the Apollo project created a year earlier by the tech giant. Oh, and don't forget the chairman's name. Fast forward to 2021, BYD and Momenta form a joint venture, DP Intelligence Mobility, with a goal to create autonomous driving systems for certain BYD models. 
In December of 2021, BYD entered a strategic cooperation agreement with LiDAR manufacturer RoboSense. But interestingly, a year from then, in late 2022, BYD would focus its efforts on a self-developed LiDAR technology. Also in 2022, BYD and Neuro combined forces to create a next-generation autonomous delivery vehicle. March of 2022, BYD and NVIDIA enter agreement with the former adopting the Drive Hyperion, which is described as a compute and sensor toolkit to power automated driving. Interestingly, one month later, in April 2022, it is announced that BYD and Horizon Robotics have partnered up on the Journey 5 processor for autonomous driving applications. But two months after, it is reported BYD's semiconductor subsidiary has begun work designing its own self-driving chip. One year later, in March of 2023, BYD chooses NVIDIA's Drive Orin, a system on a chip, for its onboard computers. The combination of Hyperion and Drive Orin would essentially mirror what is powering the Level 3 Drive Pilot system in Mercedes-Benz's. Hilariously, in the following month, Chairman Wang Chuan Fu dismissed fully autonomous driving as impractical and impossible, pointing to the large amount of money that would be required to develop it and instead, Chuan Fu believes investing in automation and production lines is a better use of money. It's an interesting comment, but it kind of makes sense when you find out that BYD assembly lines are really labor intensive and lack the automation that you see from Tesla lines. Though, if they make a lot of money by selling loads of cars, I'm not sure why they can't do both, improving their manufacturing process and investing in self-driving. But wait, the whipsaw continues, because in May of 2023, just a month after his comments were made public, Reuters reported that BYD is beefing up its autonomous driving efforts. It was at a BYD Investors Forum that month that Stella Lee, BYD's senior vice president, told attendees they are actually investing in automation and intelligence technologies because they just hired 4,000 to 5,000 software engineers and that in two to three years, they'll have various types of innovation in driver assistance features. Let's take a step back and try to sum up BYD's journey to autonomy. They were initially teaming up with Baidu's Apollo project, but ended that partnership. They gave up a Chinese-based autonomous driving system to do what? To team up with NVIDIA's all-inclusive self-driving stack, Hyperion, which utilizes an American-sourced AI chip, but at the same time has now invested in thousands of new hires to create their own high-level automated driving technologies just a month after their chairman said it was impossible. Could it be they are trying to hedge their NVIDIA partnership? Because there is risk in your company depending on American-sourced chips in light of all the sanctions that the Biden administration has put on advanced technology coming out of our country. For now, the Drive Orin has escaped attention from sanctions, but the President's inner circle is currently looking at expanding their scope on the ban of semiconductor technology being exported to China. Whatever the reasoning behind their choices, the debate rages on if BYD selling more cars than Tesla means more than Tesla making more money per vehicle. To me, it's not relevant on a long time frame because I see these auto manufacturers on two entirely different paths. One path leads a car company to becoming the new Toyota of the electric vehicle world, selling cars in volume at low prices. The other path leads a car company to becoming a revolutionary software technology company with margins to match. If you think selling a bunch of cars means much to investors, look to the billions of dollars legacy automotive brings in every quarter, and then look at the price to earnings ratios they trade at. If you think BYD is able to compete with Tesla on what really will matter, the software margins that its self-driving features will command, and the app store-like fees it will collect, it seems a better bet will not be investing in BYD, but NVIDIA instead, because their chips and their autonomous driving stack might be the only thing that can save the Chinese automaker.